Good evening. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We join today to celebrate the Sacred Liturgy for the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is Gather Us In. Please stand. We begin with the sign of our victory, the power of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you deliver us from the power of evil. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the great commandment of love. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal sign of the love of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love Fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. Blessed be my rock, extolled be God my Savior, you who gave great victories to your King and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, 
God, may the Lord be in your mind, on your lips, and your hearts, and your proclaim his gospel worthy and well. In the name of the Father. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. This is good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In just over a week, voters throughout the United States will go to the polls, participating once again in a democratic process. This, of course, is a presidential election year, and the stakes are high. As Election Day approaches, it is important for us as Christians in the Catholic tradition to take some time and reflect on what our faith asks asks of us as we prepare to vote. Our faith must inform our politics. Our church never tells anyone who to vote for, and we don't tell faithful Catholics who they should not or cannot vote for. Instead, the church asks that everyone have a properly informed conscience in accordance with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the clear and consistent teachings of the church. This sometimes frustrates those who wish that church leaders would make things simple for voters by telling them who to vote for, but that simply is not possible or advisable. Every responsible adult must make his or own, her own decisions when it comes time to vote. The place where such decisions are made is in the sanctuary of one's conscience, the sanctuary of one's conscience. Who should I vote for in the upcoming election? Can faithful Catholics who are conscientious about their religious beliefs and fundamental human values vote for candidates or political parties that have taken positions that are contrary to our deepest convictions. Like many Catholics, I have spent considerable time prayerfully contemplating the untenable nature of such questions because both of the national party platforms contain seriously flawed moral convictions. While I cannot and do not endorse one candidate over another, I think faithful Catholics and all Americans must challenge key planks of both the Republican and Democratic platforms, noting that, for example, one party seeks to remove the unborn child from the moral equation, and the other party endorses capital punishment and fails to treat immigrants with human dignity by taking away their faces, their significance. Both candidates 
both parties must be held accountable for their past actions and proposed platforms. This can never be reduced to a single issue, as gravely serious as these issues are. Instead, we must pray, reflect, and act based on applying gospel values to the full range of moral and societal issues that are at stake. We have a responsibility as American citizens to go to the polls, or in these days, there's the drop box, and as Christians, to go with formed consciences. Consciences that formed not only by, uh, not only by pundits and campaign speeches and attack ads, but consciences formed by prayer and the wisdom we find in Scripture. And our readings for this weekend provide us with a great deal of wisdom indeed. In the first reading, we are reminded of the Lord's call to not only care for the widow, the stranger, the orphan, but also hear their cries and work to ensure that they are not oppressed. The Lord is addressing the people of Israel after they have been redeemed from bondage to Pharaoh, but while they are still uh, a band of wandering uh, Benoines in the desert, we would say, journeying toward the promised land, so it's the time in between, between bondage and the promised land, God looks ahead to the time when they will be settled in the promised land, in this new land where they will plant farms and dig cisterns and will build cities after conquer conquering the inhabitants of Palestine. But after a few generations, God knows the Israelites will be tempted to forget that they were once exiles, outcasts, strangers, and slaves. Once they achieve some measure of economic security and they establish a government, once they are uh, the insiders, so to speak, they will be tempted to treat other exiles and aliens in Palestine as outsiders. This social amnesia forgetting one's own humble beginnings, can erode the impetus to compassion for others. So God tells them and us to remember where we came from and find the common ground for compassion in our common humanity. Remember that you were once aliens and exiles, God commands. There is no sense of entitlement, no inherent of right to oppress, no inherent right to oppress someone weaker than we are when we remember our humble origins. Friends, what a difference it would make if Americans today remembered that almost all of us are descendants of immigrants when we are resenting today's immigrants, perhaps. What a difference it would make if the powerful CEO remembered the first time he or she was hired when their resume was only a uh, when their resume was only a black sh blank sheet of paper, what a difference it would make if the wealthy person remembered that the only difference between them and the homeless man on the street is just a single Wall Street collapse or a change of heart by the board of directors. Friends, the passage from Exodus illustrates the potential of abuse by those in power as most susceptible to the bottom layer of the powerless in that society, aliens, orphans, widows, and the poor person who has to bar borrow money to survive. This was a day before Social Security, orphanages, and welfare. These groups in Palestine were especially, especially vulnerable and therefore easiest to, abuse by, to be abused by those in power. But God was trying to create a new type of world, form a nation of people motivated by a higher and nobler societal interests rather than just self-interest. Catholic social teaching provides an excellent framework for reflecting on this new world a nation motivated by a higher and nobler cause, fundamental social
principles, including the sanctity of human life, including abortion, euthanasia, assisted suicide, capital punishment, respect for strangers, the dignity of family life based on marriage between a man and a woman, and the protection and formation of our children, a just and compassionate immigration reform and care for the migrants and their families, protection for the poor and vulnerable through health care, housing, and just wages, racial equality and special concern for the rights of minorities, the dignity of work and the rights of workers, the pursuit of peace and social justice here at home and internationally, religious liberty for people of all faiths and cultures, both here at home and throughout the world, the stewardship of God's creation, care for the environment. These issues and many others are vitally important to the health and well-being of our society. And they must be considered carefully in the exercise of our informed conscience, whether in the voting booth or in completing a mail-in ballot. This, of course, this is, of course, a tall order in our current political environment. Candidates may make many promises and few, if any, will go to the at lengths necessary to ensure the dignity of all. Our country is deeply divided along uh, many lines, often in those partisan and ideological divisions. Common ground seems so impossible, does it not? And yet, that is what we as a church, as a community of faith, are called upon to create. We know that labels such as liberal, conservative, progressive, and traditional fail to capture the totality of any one person. I think one of the greatest gifts we can give to our world today is to model what it is like to be a community where all are welcome, where all life is sacred, and where we work together to bring about the common good by seeking common ground. That's why it remains important for all of us to remain engaged in the process beyond Election Day, to hold our elected leaders accountable, not only to us as individuals, but to the common good. The fact is that as faithful Catholics and responsible citizens, we must make difficult choices. There are no, no easy solutions to the dilemmas we face today. There is only one solemn obligation to participate in the government of our nation as co-responsible members of a free society and as missionary disciples called by Jesus Christ to transform our society and to care for our common home. Together let us proudly profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are called to love our neighbor as ourselves, so with faith and love, we now offer our prayers on their behalf. For the church, that we may desire a deeper union with God and grow in our connection with our neighbors through our compassion, outreach, and service, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are suffering from illness of body or mind, that God will heal and restore the sick and strengthen and protect those who are caring for them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Christian unity, may the Spirit guide us to greater cooperation in our work of ministry and bring together all followers of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of the wounds of racism, that God will help us to turn from, from prejudice and give us the courage to work for inclusion, fairness, and the recognition of all people, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For safe elections, that God will protect all who plan to vote and all who will be working at polling places so that, so that all may fulfill their civic responsibilities, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they be held in the loving embrace of our God for all time. We remember especially Anthony Skirbo, Dennis Sperano, and Norma Stum. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Let us take a few moments to add our own intentions in silence. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we place all our needs and concerns in the loving heart of Jesus as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty. 
that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we <clears throat> proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he said the blessing, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Father, grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your Kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Father, grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, <laughs> and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. As you leave church this evening, please take a copy of the bulletin. We also invite you to take a copy for, of a prayer for leadership as, and pray it as we approach this year's election. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads for God's blessing. Lord God, from the abundance of your mercies, provide for your servants and ensure their safety, so that, strengthened by your blessings, they may at all times abound in thanksgiving and bless you with unending exultation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit Come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. Still as you call. 